Welcome to FinTech Confidential, bringing you the people, tech, and companies that change how you pay and get paid. Today on FinTech Confidential Leaders One-on-One, -on -one, we have a very special guest. J.B. Orecchia, the president and CEO of Savvy Money. After 20 years in, in finance to work at Disney as the VP of uh, Disney.com, let me just tell you the movie business is a lot harder than finance and tech. In the higher credit bands, rate is really important. In the lower credit bands, payment is very important. Why else do I manage my credit? I manage my credit in order to qualify for better rates, for better loan products, and so how does Savvy Money do that? And so really that was the problem we were solving for the consumer. But second to that, we're also driving loans and insights in the Savvy Money product to help you execute on your business. We also give the consumer goal setting as part of that. So your, so your score is 680 and you wanna to get to 720, what do I need to do to get there? What things do I need to work on? The other thing we give visibility to is market share information. How am I doing with my customer base? Since we have all of the lending data, I can show you, Ted, by loan product, by credit band, how much market share do you have and how much market shares with other institutions? 50% of our audience that consumes savvy money is in the highest credit. Listen to your consumers and make a conscious effort to solve the biggest problem. Now let's quickly shine a spotlight on a game changer in the financial world, Clearingworks. Simplify your financial management with a one-stop solution for all your AR needs and with a single login. Are you intrigued? Visit clearingworks.com to schedule your demo today. Hi, I'm your host, Ted Huff, here to bring you FinTech industry insights, market trends, news, Life stories from fintech leaders, thinkers, and doers. Today on Fintech Confidential Leaders One on One, we have a very special guest, JB Orecchia, the president and CEO of Savvy Money. For those unfamiliar with Savvy Money, it's a leading provider of personalized credit education, scores, reports, and monitoring tools directly through banks and credit unions. With over 1,100 financial institution partners, They've made credit education easily accessible to millions of consumers right where they bank. What sets Savvy Money apart is their unique approach to delivering hyper-relevant advice tailored to each user's credit profile and every financial institution they find themselves in. Not only that, but it shapes the content and offers to give them their next best actions for improving their credit health. Now, this isn't a one-size-fits-all type thing. Savvy money solutions empower the customers to truly take care of their credit journey. Users get the transparency they need to know what different actions they need to take, how it impacts their credit scores through simulators, credit monitoring alerts. And what this does is it builds that financial confidence for them and also protects them against issues like identity theft. In our discussion today, JB will be sharing his vision for the future of credit education technologies that could enable highly intuitive conversational experiences like having a financial coach in your pocket. Now, JB brings over 35 years driving innovation in credit, data, and financial services to this table. Under his leadership, Savvy Money has truly delivered personalized credit engagement and financial empowerment at scale. So stay tuned as we dive into the importance of financial literacy, Savvy Money's unique partnership model, power of data-driven personalization, JB's insights on the cutting edge of credit solutions, and of course, how it pays to be savvy. JB, welcome to the show, my man. Hey, Ted, you're hired. You're hired. <laughs> like, that was that was a fantastic uh, overview of the company and, and a pitch for Savvy Money, so I appreciate it. You got one of the facts wrong, though. Oh, you said, what did it get You wrong? said 1,100 institutions? And we're now at 1,300 institutions. So, oh, well, I said, uh, I said over, I said over <laughs> 1,100 just to be safe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> by a magnitude of 18% uh, if my math's correct. So, yeah. uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, no, very, that's very good. well. That's good. You, you, you covered it and uh, exciting times over here at Savvy Money. One of the things 
I always love having the the pre-show calls and really sitting down to, to understand the company and, and the person that I'm going to be sitting down with. And during that conversation, you know, we talked about your brief stand at Disney as a VP of marketing. And in between that and Savvy Money, you spent some time at freecreditreport.com. I find that to be quite an interesting pivot. What inspired that move and how did those diverse experiences shape your approach to Savvy Money? Ted, we've got to go back even a little bit farther, right? So started my career in finance. I was with household 10 years in the branches and in the car division. And back then we used to deliver credit reports via the mail. And so that's how the free credit score and free credit report model was actually born. We were the first to deliver credit reports online and it was really solving that consumer problem. Um, so we built that to a very large company, sold it to Experian. I stayed with Experian six years, but that product wasn't free. It was actually a subscription model and grew to be a fantastic business that other businesses kind of followed it like Credit Carmel. We'll talk a, a little bit about really the genesis of building Savvy Money. And yeah, you're right. I took a little brief stint after 20 years in, in finance to uh, work at Disney as the VP of uh, Disney.com. So it was a little bit of a segue. And I also produced a movie starring Patrick Warburton and Andy Dick during that time. And and let me just tell you, the movie business is a lot harder than finance <laughs> and tech. And so I decided to stick with what you know and, and stay focused. But we did sell that movie to Showtime. It was on for a couple of years. Uh, usually you would see it on late night TV. So you probably won't find it too much now, but a fun experience, but at the end of the day, needed to get back to what I do well. So we're 13 years now into into Savvy Muddy's journey and uh, su super exciting in terms of what we're doing in the market. I mean, I, I know I hit on this and I appreciate you diving way, way back okay. in, into the archives of, of paper credit reports and everything. Yeah. With all of that time in the financial services, looking at creative endeavors with Disney.com, and then coming into to Savvy Money, what have been some of the biggest challenges that you faced and how, how have you leveraged all of that experience to overcome them and become that leader in credit education? Yeah, it's a combination of credit education and really solving financial problems for the consumer as well as for the financial institution and what they're trying to do with their with their customer base, right? And so at the time that I created Savvy Money, Credit Karma had really drafted off of everything we were doing in the market as it relates to, to credit scores and credit reports, but that wasn't a free product, right? And they said, you know what? We're gonna make this a free product and we're gonna have advertising there. And so I thought to myself, hmm, if you're a bank or credit union, you really want all of your customers going to Credit Karma <laughs> and then losing them to traffic. Yeah. Credit Karma is a great product. It was a great consumer value prop at the time. It solved the need in the market. It made it completely free and it exposed offers that that consumer could get. So nothing against Credit Karma. They did a fantastic job. That is a great business and a great product. But if you're a financial institution and you want to maintain that relationship with your consumer, and market your products and services, I felt like we needed to build an embedded solution where the consumer is. In digital banking, right in front of the consumer, in their mobile and in their desktop, when they're engaging with their financial institution on a regular basis. And so, sometimes that's daily. And, and we wanted to take and leverage that credit data and really provide value to the consumer. Why else do I manage my credit? I manage my credit in order to qualify for better rates, for better loan products. And so how does Savvy Money do that for me? And so really that was the problem we were solving for the consumer is help me get better at managing my credit so that my credit score improves. When my credit score improves, show me where that saves me money with my institution. What were some of the biggest challenges you you ran into while, while trying to deliver on that? Early on, it was really convincing financial institutions that they needed this as a product built into their digital banking with all the other priorities that they have, that this is something they should do. Because in the early days of credit monitoring, credit reports, and financial wellness, you're really looking at it as an expense. And I said, uh, yes, it's an, ex it's an expense, but it's going to improve the financial well-being of your, of your consumers. So they're ge generating stickiness as well as really better credit risk. But second to that, 
we're also driving loans and insights in the Savvy Money product to help you execute on your business. So this is no longer just an expense. You're driving considerable ROI from the product. And you really had to change the mindset and get their buy-in early. And once they saw the engagement and the activity on loans, it was the business was off and running and, and gaining adoption. The other thing was, hey, these banks and credit unions are busy. They have so many things on their product roadmaps, different things that they have to do. The integration's got to be easy. The implementation's got to be easy. The ability to market savvy money's got to be easy. This needs to be turnkey for us because I'm focused over here on my business. And so I want you to align everything that savvy money does with my business, as well as make it super simple to do. And so that's the other part of the equation that savvy money does. Well, and you you mentioned something that that we, we know, but we don't talk about a whole lot is financial institutions don't always do a great job of, of releasing technical products and really engaging with their, their, their consu- the customers and the consumers, especially when you start to get into financial wellness and loans, and then just trying to bridge that gap. How is Savvy Money delivering on that, bridging that gap between the technology the the institution and just bringing those services back to the consumer. And there's a couple of things. One, we had to get integrated into the digital platforms that they worked with. So Savvy Money integrates with 40 digital platforms. Pretty much every digital banking application in the industry now has a integration with Savvy Money. So we had to do that heavy lifting with the digital banking providers. And so we set up reseller relationships for our product with all the major digital banking providers. So that was that was step number one, that if an FI wanted to turn it on, that was gonna be an easy implementation because we had already done all the heavy lifting on the integration, all the security verification. If you think about it, when you're gonna bring on a vendor, there's all this due diligence you need to do, right? Well, we did that one-on-one with all of the digital banking providers. So therefore that was already completed and done and so that box was checked and it's like, oh, this is already being resold by my digital banking provider. I've got a master agreement with my digital banking provider. And uh-huh. this is just another feature that gets included in that bundle with all the other products and services that that digital banking provider has. And then separate from that, the other challenge was, if you think about the digital banking provider, this isn't their core business. So we had to be easy for them too that they could turn it on, but that Savvy Money would be an extension of their brand, handle their customers well, and all the services that we provide. And so we're turnkey for them as well, is that helping them with the sales process, all the client management, all the marketing. And so they basically stand us up, get out of the way, let us really manage those relationships on their behalf. Well, and you're, you're, you're talking about these integration into these core service providers. We all know those don't move fast. We know that they, they have a very strict way that they have to work. And that integration takes some time and a lot of times doesn't provide a whole lot of data, not just to, to savvy money, but even to the consumer. I would love for you to kind of walk through some of the features that you guys have, have designed and developed through these integrations to uh, to provide the offers that are personalized. Yeah, so the integration is one thing, and then the value prop that we deliver to the consumer is another. So let's start with the value prop to the consumer once you have the integration through the digital banking provider. So when a consumer is looking at their score or their full report, they can update it every day. So that data is constantly being refreshed. And if they're not updating it daily, we update all that data weekly. We're then applying the lending criteria from the lender against all of those offers and personalizing the offers. So if you were to do a balance transfer and you were to get the rate that we're displaying based on your credit data, still subject to income qualifications, you're going to see what you could say. If I refied my car, if I consolidated credit card debt into a personal loan, we personalize that down to the actual payments and savings. They can run all those scenarios. So a consumer can actually see hey, I'm going to get this value. Now, now I'm motivated to improve my credit because I know when my credit jumps up. We also give the consumer goal setting as part of that. So 
your your score is 680 and you want to get to 720, what do I need to do to get there? What things do I need to work on? We break the credit score down into its parts and we show you, hey, Ted, you're doing this well and you need to work on these things. So you're doing great on cardio, but you're looking a little flabby. You need to work out a little bit more. So we need you to start working on some lifting. And so utilization might be an area that you need to work on. And so we'll key in on that. And as you make progress, we'll tell you, Ted, you're doing great. You went from 30% utilization to 25 to 22. Keep working at it and you'll see increases in your score as a result. In fact, you could even go into the simulator and actually input those different changes and see what the estimated changes to your score would be. You've mentioned how the partnership model that you've had with the financial institutions has been key as the way that I would describe it, key to the 1,300, as you you, remind, you very, very clearly reminded me, 1,300 financial institution yeah. partners. What benefits are those partners seeing from you being able to deliver exactly what you just talked about? So a lot of things that we provide, you've got the consumer value prop. Then it is giving insight to the financial institution, hey, what's happening with those consumers? One, we want to show that they're progressing from a credit score standpoint. So we track it after six months, after 12 months, and 12 months plus. So you can see those consumers moving bands. So if you're a community bank or credit union, you can you can point to, hey, we're doing good by our consumers with this product because look at them moving up and, and actually getting better financially. The other thing we give visibility to is market share information. How am I doing with my customer base? Since we have all of the lending data, I can show you, Ted, buy loan product, by credit band, how much market share do you have and how much market share is with other institutions? So people vote with their feet all day, every day. It doesn't matter what company, what product, what service. That is how people vote is with their feet, where they go and where they spend their money. I would love if you could share with us maybe a success story from one of these institutions that thought they were really good over here but found out that they actually were a little bit better over here and were able to capitalize on that. I mean, we have a number of those. I, I can't really cite names without- And I will. I, yeah, I, I yeah, really yeah. So <laughs> we have a couple examples of where they changed their product. They had a personal loan product that had a very low limit on it. And the low limit was, was an appealing to consumers. So it had, a, it had a 10K max on their personal loan. And I went into their data and I said, do you watch any of the SoFi advertising? Like SoFi's offering up to 50 or up to... So in that example, they went, oh shoot, like we're... It's not that our rates were bad on our personal loan product. Our limits weren't very high. Wow, and so they yeah. went to their underwriting group and they actually increased the limits and they saw a big spike in consolidation opportunities for their consolidation product on personal loans. So that's a good example of really digging into the features as it relates to the products that they're offering, making tweaks and seeing if making those tweaks makes a difference. Another big thing that, that FI started leveraging was we track all of the click data in terms of a, an offer that a consumer is looking at, but maybe they didn't buy. And so doing retargeting to those consumers, we saw very high conversion rates. It's very similar to when you're on the web and you click on something, you're looking at a car and next thing you know, you're at Yahoo and you're like, wow, that BMW ad just keeps following me around. Because well, that's, maybe what my, they... that's where my brain was going too, right? It's like, as you're describing, I'm going, this feels and sounds so much like to the traditional online marketing and online e-commerce process of identifying what's working and what's not working. And and I, can, can you dive in a little bit deeper on how you guys like provide that info? The other thing that we look at is trended data in terms of consumer mm -hmm. behavior. So not only are we seeing what the consumer just did, we're seeing what they've been doing over time. So we have two years worth of credit history. So when you start to build machine learning or behavioral models, you can uh -huh. start to stitch these things together. And let's use an auto loan example, right? Let's say mm -hmm. somebody's auto loan is three years in or two years in. Well, warranties are, are running out potentially there's an opportunity, hey, I want to get a new car. So you start to look at all those indicators, behavioral uh, cues, 
the trended data, where they are in their loan life cycle. And those, it's just math. At the end of the day, it's math. And you stitch those things together and it's like, ding, 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 ding. Ted is in the market to either refi or get a new auto loan or... Here's a quick message from the Accrued Series sponsor. As default rates continue to rise and margins compress in lending, financial organizations are searching for solutions to combine that operational efficiency with innovation. Look no further as LoanPro allows lenders to enhance their origination, servicing, collections, and payments using the foundation of a modern lending core. Check out LoanPro.io to learn more about how over 600 financial organizations have modernized their tech stack with LoanPro. We just saw that there's an inquiry that came in on an auto loan. You're going to want to call Ted and talk about what you have. So those are all things that are that you need to look at the data. You want to limit the messaging to be relevant to the consumer because they're getting well, bombarded all the time. So why is this interesting to me? And be thoughtful about the information that you look at so that you only have so many times to get in front of the consumer. So be thoughtful yeah. about it and subtle about it. And that's why the Savvy Money product is like that in that you're getting in there and you're looking at your score and you're analyzing things. And oh, by the way, while you're in here fiddling around, hey, if I were to do this, huh, I never thought that that could save me money. Love that you draw, jumped like straight into the AI discussion sure. this early in the conversation. With the solutions that Savvy Money is delivering, could you just elaborate a little bit more on how you and the team at Savvy Money are looking to leverage AI to, yeah. to really bring things to the next next level? We're very early stage in it, Ted. One is, why did my score change? And so we've got interesting things in there that break the score down into its parts and we tell you where you're deficient. But how do you turn all the data that you have and the historical data that you have and where somebody wants to get to? And then the answer that you give them on, well, what happened? And then what do I need to do? AI is going to make that answer much more sophisticated. And it's going to give a couple of different answers as to, well, there's a couple ways to get from point A to point B. And so it'll lay out like, well, one way to do it is this, or another way to do it is this. And depending on what the resources are that that consumer has available to them, if they've got excess cash, then reducing their, their debt might be one way to do it. If they've got a mortgage and they could consolidate debt with a home equity loan, that might be another way to do it. So we're going to be able to use AI to say, here's the path. So you could still get to point B or C. There's a couple of different routes. Yeah, it's it's been really interesting to, to look at and have conversations with financial institutions and fintechs. And everybody's looking at at AI in different ways, which I, I found, find very refreshing. It's not the same way for everybody, like it, it has been in the past around risk, fraud, uh, any money laundering. Like there's uh, so many things that, that have been so homogenized, I guess the way that I would describe it, that, that I see the approach around using machine learning and, and artificial intelligence and large language models to really deliver better services how do I increase the revenue? How do I reduce my losses? I see and I hear that that's the same approach that yeah. Savvy Money is taking. And that makes me wonder, like, when we look at, because you, you've really got two customers, really, that you're, you're working with, right? So you've got the financial institutions and you've got the consumers. I would love to start with who would be the perfect financial institution that just makes total sense that obvious choice that they should be leveraging savvy money for their customers. Yeah. All of them. That is the short answer in, <laughs> in the way in which we deliver the functionality and access to various components of savvy money might slightly vary at different levels. And so whether you're a small institution and everything is turnkey or you're a larger institution and we need to expose data assets, cues, information into your own CRM, potentially populating a Snowflake database. So at both ends of the spectrum, we'll either do more of the work here, we'll enable more pre-done marketing at the smaller level where they just don't have the, the resources. As you move upstream, there's more customization 
There's more integration. We integrate with loan systems as well. So the loan mm -hmm. origination system, we wanted to make the consumer experience seamless. So when someone applied for a loan, we took it through the actual loan system and made that part a better experience for the consumer and so that the FI could see click data, conversion data, like all of that. So we're, we're kind of bifurcating our business into groups of type of FI, type of FinTech, smaller, larger. And so we have our solution in and of itself for the consumer is okay. similar, but as the way in which we deploy it for an institution or connect things that they can actually consume and get value out of might look a little bit different. Who is who's like a, a, a good target person to start with for savvy money? And then we'll dive into it. You a say target of... person, you mean the end customer that's using the product? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's <laughs> back to that answer, Ted. It's, it's uh, <laughs> I expected that anyone anyways, that has credit. No, but because seriously, 50% of our audience that consumes savvy money is in the highest credit band. Okay. So, but there's different, you're at a different life point, but but your your credit is what you pay for debt. So if you're in the high credit band, you're like, this is an asset. I want to make sure I'm staying on top of it and make sure it stays there, right? If you're in the lower bands, you have different needs. And so what we did was we started to build goal setting, action plans, a financial checkup to do really a diagnostic on where the consumer is and how much they make and how much they spend. So we actually show people, hey, your car payment is a little bit high based on your income. Your, your housing payment is a little bit high. Like if you wanna know where there's gaps in your financial picture and you'd like to be able to get to a better credit spot, then your lifestyle in terms of your spending could be having an impact on that. How are you seeing savvy money position itself to continue to lead in the current market landscape? Support provided by Skyflow. What if you could build fast, but not break privacy? What if you could ensure data privacy, governance, and compliance with just a few API calls? What if you could worry less about PCI requirements while actually improving privacy and security? How much more time would your team have to truly innovate? How much faster could you build and ship new features? How much more powerful could your app be? Skyflow is a zero trust data privacy vault delivered as an API. Skyflow's radically simple design lets you collect, secure, and tokenize personal information like card data and payment details. And with built-in features like encrypted data analysis and sharing, anonymization, and advanced governance, your days of choosing between data security and data usability are over. Whether you're just concerned with PCI compliance or need to go further to include CCPA, GDPR, SOC 2, and beyond, Skyflow has you covered. What if you could build fast but not break privacy? With Skyflow, you can. Visit skyflowsecure.com today to learn how. One is being very thoughtful about solving problems. And those problems occur at the consumer level. They, they occur at the business level. So I'll give you a, a consumer example. We have a new product we're rolling out that's in its early, its early stages. And turndowns are a problem for when you get pre-qualified for an offer and you're going to get turned down and it's a negative experience. Well, why not take that experience and say, Ted, can't do it now, right? But here's a path to get you to where you want to go. And once you do, we'll alert you. And so it's not a no, it's a not now. Or Ted, you're in the high credit band and interest rates are a little bit high right now. And you don't want to keep checking back in for, for rates. You're busy. And so you would like to have a rate of 4% and right now it's at five. And so we're going to say, Ted, you're in the highest credit band, so you can't go any higher. So we're just going to put a rate monitor on you. And the second that rate gets close to four, because we'll probably nudge you and say, <laughs> hey, Ted, it's at four and a quarter. Is that good enough? And you'll decide whether you want to pull the trigger on that. You either say, nope, I'm waiting for four, but at least we're providing you a service and we're solving a problem that is based on your data. And then there'll be folks that are in the middle that are a couple points away or 20 points away or 30 points away from that next level. 
again, all things being constant, work on this and we'll notify. So that's a, that's a, that's a cool problem that we're solving. The rates, especially for some folks is more important than others and the payments, but those two things are tied really, really closely together. Yep. How has the somewhat recent rise in interest rates impacted the way that savvy money approaches this and how is it? Well, there's, what do you there's, see in there's the two market? things in play here, Ted. So savvy money situation and then the lender situation. Lenders, as rates went up, delinquencies went up a little bit too. Consumer debt got, you can't pay it down as fast. And then with what happened with SVB and okay. a lot of deposits left some of the smaller institutions, last year there was a real focus on deposits. So we helped institutions identify those consumers and market deposit products. While rates are, are higher, there's ways to either do a balance transfer or to get a personal loan and consolidate credit card debt. It's not great, but it's better than the current situation. So how do I work with the products that I have now in order to gain ground? Or if I'm a homeowner, at least a home equity loan is a lot cheaper than 22% on a credit card. So let me keep moving myself forward in terms of my financial situation while I wait for rates to come down. What we're seeing now is that lenders are starting to see a little blue sky and they're ramping up for more lending in this year. Last year was, they did lending and we, we saw a fair amount of it, but <laughs> not like in past years when rates were right. really low. Last year was the year of deposits, and we're still seeing deposit interest. We're seeing a change in the guard now where everyone's gearing up to start to lend more. So I, I like to start to look a little bit further forward into the future when we get to this part of the episode. And <laughs> Hold you know, on. Let me, you... <laughs> let me channel my future brain. <laughs> mm. it's, it's okay. <laughs> you, you, just, you can do a quantum jump. It's okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll let you. Uh, so when, when you start to look, you know, five, 10 years into the future, what, what role do you see savvy money playing as all of these new technologies come out and the way we look at money changes? I mean, we, we've been forever changed the way that we look at money, especially as we were talking about where interest rates were basically nothing to them jumping by tens and tens of points. How, how do you see the future turning out and, and how does savvy money like looking at that? Or you even well, personally? Well, Ted, in 10 years, I, I hope I'm retired because I'm 58 now. And if, if I'm still doing this in 10 years, my wife might have my neck. I think it's going to happen a lot faster than that, to be honest. And so I'll give you my three to five years, which I think is going to be transformative. 10 years with the way technology is moving, it's hard for me to guess. But I will tell you that AI is going to pay, play a massive role in this. The institution and the in, individual, I'll kind of pull it back a little bit here. Where do I want to get to? Uh -huh. And and really being sophisticated about the decisions I make and the things I do. Not to mention, if I deviate from that path at all, it will course correct me and say, okay, that decision just cost you two years or that decision just cost you X uh -huh. amount of money. And so it's going to get that sophisticated in terms of its recommendations and its pathing to you, the consumer on, you want to get to point A and point B or C or D or wherever you want to get to, here's your plan. And then we'll track how you're doing. We'll, we'll track all your spending. We'll track all your, your debt. We'll track what's happening with the interest rates. All of that will be inputs into an equation and it'll be constantly course correcting and providing you with that feedback. That's what consumer, consumers want. They're like, hey, I just want you to tell me what I should do. I realize it's not perfect, but get me as close as you can. And then tell me how I'm doing relative to my peers or whatever benchmark I want to set for myself. That's going to be important. The same will hold true for financial institutions. You set margins, you set yield, you set credit risk, you set all those things. And we should be able to inform you and control 
really what happens in terms of that consumer experience in order to drive on those objectives. What it makes me start to think about is like, as leaders, how does the leveraging of the AI and all these other areas that that typically come from lots of thought and lots of strategic perspective, how how would you see the style of leadership or, or the direction of leadership to help people leverage that and not be afraid of that? First of all, I think it starts with being very thoughtful about the consumer and the consumer object. Like you've got to start there. Institutions sometimes get off track when they're too focused on yield or profit or whatever. And that's all super, super important. But if you solve the consumer problem, then you're going to solve the business problem. And it sounds a little bit cliche, but you really need to do that. The institution feels good about it. The consumer feels good about dealing with the institution because you're doing the right thing. The tactics of how we've been leading organizations and people is going to have to change. It's no longer going to be about how you moved from box A to box B, but what were the things that you did for sure that moved for box sure. A to yeah, box I was been suggesting that getting from point A to point B wouldn't wouldn't be mixed in with the right way of doing it, or how you deal with people or how you deal with your customers or all of that is baked into that philosophy and that needs to be a major ingredient in the formula. There are a lot of entrepreneurs out there that are trying to decide how do I focus on the right thing to solve for this problem that I have. And I think AI is going to make it a lot easier for them to figure out whether or not it makes sense to even try down that space. But I would love to get your perspective of seeing these things grow and being in so many different areas. If you were to give one piece of advice to an entrepreneur, and it was the only piece of advice you could give them, what would it be and why? Listen to your consumers and make a conscious effort to solve the biggest problems. And I say that both at the consumer level and at the FI level, because we have two, two customers, and we have three actually, if you count the digital banking providers. And so we try and really marry those things together and at Savvy Money, that client satisfaction and that customer satisfaction that comes through the data and the feedback we get in our, our customer ratings from the financial institutions that we work with, that drives the DNA of our company. It's what everyone wants a paycheck, everyone wants bonuses and, and the company to do well. Right. But when an FI goes on and on about how great we were to work with and and follow up and just the success that they've had that that drives the the company satisfaction and same would hold true for the consumer when we get that consumer feedback that you changed my life now you're working with a purpose right there's a purpose behind what you're doing and it's i don't want to make that sound cliche but that's makes you feel good about what you do how You've been successful with, with setting up your team to have that mindset, to really focus on solving those problems and, and creating that raving fan. It comes down to our, our seven values that we, we call the Savvy Seven for the company, right? So we got our mission and vision, and then we got our Savvy Seven. I'll just read a, a couple of them to you here. Love what you do. Got to start there, right? Enthusiasm is contagious. Number two, think smart. We're experts in our industry break barriers. So it, you always have to have this element of innovation, trust in team, right? We're rooted in oneness, live your truth. We're honest and we keep promises. That's a big one. I just got a little chill there actually, because it's, <laughs> it, that, that, that follow up with clients and doing what you say you're going to do is super important. Listen and learn. That's, that's one that we all need to work on right? Because we're so busy talking, we're not listening. So diverse, diverse voices make us stronger. And then the last one, be amazing. Empowerment leads to excellence. And so that's kind of the values of the company, which were created by every level of the company, both senior, lower team members that have been with the company 10 years to ones that have been with the company, you know, six months. And so we worked on 
pulling this together and there was a lot of buy-in as to that's going to be the values of the company that drive us. Oh man. Well, I, I love that we're wrapping up on, on the values today. This has been an extremely insightful conversation with you, JB. We've covered so much ground today. We, we've talked about how you got to where you're at. We've talked about what Savvy Money is doing. We've talked about your approach to the leadership. We've talked about AI and what it can do for us as we go we through. We talked about and, not to get into movie making because it's expensive. We did, we did talk about not to, not to get into movie making. Uh, yeah, we did talk about that. Although I did break even um, on that movie, but yeah. Uh, congratulations. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't happen all the time. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we, we talked about all these different things. And, and most importantly, I believe that, you know, we, we covered the the pieces of, of helping people become more financially well and move themselves towards a place of better security for themselves. And I, I really appreciate all the insights that you've shared. And I know we could have gone on probably for a lot longer diving into a lot more of these details. So I really appreciate the time today, man. It was a pleasure, Ted. Awesome. So if you'd like to learn more about Savvy Money's products and services, you can go ahead and visit them at their website at SavvyMoney.com or you can follow them on the social medias at Savvy Money. And again, JB, thank you for joining us, sharing your expertise. And to our listeners, don't forget, subscribe, like, share, follow, leave a comment with your thoughts on the episode. Your engagement really helps us continue bringing valuable content from leaders in fintech. And until next time, keep moving forward and exploring the exciting world of fintech. As we wrap up today's episode, I've got one last thing for you. If you're in the trenches fighting fraud and financial crime, you know it's a complex battlefield. That's where Hawk's AI tools for real-time payment screening, AML, transaction monitoring, and dynamic customer risk rating come into play. These aren't just buzzwords, they're game changers designed to make your compliance more effective and less of a headache. Imagine slashing through false positives with precision and giving your compliance strategy the edge it needs. Head on over to gethawkai.com to sign up for a demo and discover how their platform can revolutionize how you fight fraud and financial crime. This has been a production of DD3 Media with all rights reserved. This is provided for informational purposes only. It is not offered or intended to be used as legal, tax, investment, financial, or other advice. We strive to provide accurate and up-to-date information, but will not be responsible for any missing facts or inaccurate information. You comply and understand that you should use any of this information at your own risk. Cryptocurrencies are highly volatile financial assets, so research and make your own financial decisions.